Melodic Heavy Metal. Playing it heavier. Louder. Raunchier. Faster. This is the Signals of Intuition. There's brand new Steel Heart right there with Got Me Running from their new record Through Worlds of Stardust. You're listening to the Signals of Intuition, your home for melodic hard rock and heavy metal. That right there, the first new material from Steel Heart uh, in nearly a decade. And you might know Steel Heart as the home of uh, Milianko Medijevic, who also sang in the uh, Hollywood movie Rockstar. We've actually got him on the show tonight, uh, so let's get him on the line right now. Hi, is this Millie? Yeah. Hey, how you doing, brother? Hey, Millie, doing well. How you doing? Uh, I'm good. I'm, I'm well. Just uh, a lot of interviews, so I had to hang up on someone else and, you know, get over on this one. Oh, geez. And by by the way, I don't. How how do you pronounce? Is it Millie Jenko or Millie Yanko? Millie Yanko, right? Mil- Milienko. Okay, Milienko. perfect. That's perfect. what I thought. I've heard it pronounced Milijenko, and I'm like, I think that person mispronounced it. I w- I want to make sure I got it right. Well, the Koreans call me Miljenko. <laughs> The oh, they do. Oh, that's yeah. hilarious. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's uh, it's wonderful. Actually, they call me Mil Junko. They call me the legend over there. It's <laughs> awesome. There you go. That's yeah. that's uh, <laughs> quite quite uh, quite the name. Yes, sir. So, where are you calling from? I'm calling from uh, Windsor, Ontario, which is right next to Detroit. Ah, nice. Okay. So when I do these interviews, I always like to start at sort of the beginning of you as a musician. You know how you got started, that kind of thing, and then work our way up uh, to the new record. Okay. Um, so with that in mind, where did you grow up and how did you get started in music? Um, I was born in Zagreb, Croatia, and at the age of five, I came to the United States. My parents, um, they came here and worked their butts off, and then they came back for me and my brother, and uh, we came to the United States. We started in New York City, not New York City, in New York, and then uh, we moved to Connecticut, and uh, my brother and I were... Um, he used to play guitar. He would play guitar and I would sing. And we would do like country songs because my father really liked the country music. And uh, we barely spoke the English, so we didn't know of anything else besides country music. And country music, it was nice. I, I enjoyed it, you know. However, then uh, I think it was about the age of 10 or I don't even remember how old that was. I discovered Led Zeppelin. And that was a whole nother kind of conversation because then my whole life my whole vision and everything just changed i just saw just you know i connected with the spirit you know and uh, that rock and that energy and that fire just like uh just it just took me i was like okay i'm done but i started singing when i was five years old just singing to the radio even all the time and then singing to the country music and then when i was i think it was 12 11 12 we had a we had a full-on rock band and we did, uh, I mean, we did all Zeppelin, we did Bad Company, we did all these, you know, covers. And Sure. What, so this I band, mean, was this a bunch of, like, friends from high school kind of thing? It was me and my brother, and, uh, yeah, and the other two guys from uh, school. And it was a good band, man. We were just, we were, like, good. Not just okay. I mean, we were just like, holy shit, these guys <laughs> actually can do this. You know what I mean? It's like, wow, kind of thing. It was uh, pretty impressive, uh, you know, and it's a quick story is that the drummer and we met this producer in Connecticut and uh, he was like, wow, you guys are good. We really love to, you know, take you under the wing and really get you going. So let's start rehearsing next week. You know, let's start rehearsing. Uh, we'll come to New York City. I got the rehearsal room for you. We're all ready to go. You know, and to us, that was just like, holy shit, that's like the real deal going on. Well, it's I mean, I think of myself, you know, now having played in bands and everything else for years, I would lose my mind now with that opportunity. You know, never mind right. being at 13, which would have just been, you know, like something it's almost beyond comprehension at that age. It was. It was. But I, I knew I knew it was like, all right, I'm in. Let's do it. My brother was OK. Bass player was OK. The drummer completely folded, completely sabotaged it completely it was just like amazing to watch i mean even if at that even at that time i was able to see it you know and uh, that's when that dispersed you know that dispersed and i went on to another band and with a band called the mission it was like punk not punk it was like more like 
I don't know. Yeah, so a little bit of punk pr- slash like something. rock, punk, that kind of vibe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was like in a guitar player. Um, it was Elliot, Elliot uh, Lewis. Elliot plays with the average white band keyboard. And he went on writing with a bunch of people. Great guy, great songwriter. And that's how I met him. And I was, I think I was 14, 15. And I was in this band. These guys were all like much older than I was. And um, so we, I did that for a while. And then we did a show in a place called Night Owl. And uh, this other guy um, came, comes up to me and he goes, hey, uh, listen, I have this um, I have this studio in town that, you know, rehearsal studio. And I have all these bands that come there. And this is one band. This is a really good rock band. And you look like you need to be in a rock band, the way you're moving on stage and this whole thing. I really think you should connect with these guys. Are you interested? And uh, I was like, sure, let me check it out. So I met up with uh, Chris and Jimmy and Jack and uh, came in and did some Zeppelin with them. And basically, here we go again. Zeppelin kicks it in again, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and that was it. And then um, we hung out and we started uh, rehearsing, did some shows. Really didn't have much, you know, couldn't really do many shows uh, out there. But uh, what we could have done, we did. And and uh, we rehearsed and started writing songs. And uh, then it was a long process. I mean, a lot of years went by by the time we actually got recognized, you know. And um, so was that band that you joined them? Was that uh, Red Alert? That was Red Alert, correct. Okay, and you did and that what for? So was it like, did Red Alert slowly evolve into Steel Heart? I take it. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. it did. It, it yep. This it, it was Steel Heart. It used to be, yeah, Red Alert, and then it went into uh, Steel Heart. That's the way. It, yeah, it came together. So but we changed drummers, and we added a rhythm guitar player, kind of towards the pinnacle of it. You know, getting signed and putting the records out. So right, so kind of take me through that period. Sort of you. So you're in Connecticut. Did you get signed when you were no, in Connecticut? No, 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 no. That was uh, we went through a whole disaster moment with that too. Also dealing with a another producer that just kind of just hung us in the air in the you know, and just wasted a few years of our lives and nothing happened. It was just like awful. So uh, when, you know, I just got pissed off to be honest with you, and I was like, okay, I'm I'm out of here. We made another demo, and the demo was. Uh, was uh, I think it was uh, let me see rock and roll can't stop me loving you angel eyes and Sheila I think it was those four songs it was a demo I think I've heard that at some point I'm pretty sure that's that's on the internet somewhere yeah and it's I mean nothing changed it's the same arrangement same same sound everything's the same as the record the actual record yeah so one day I was just like all right so uh, I'm having dinner with my my parents and my father asked me so what uh, what are you doing? And I said, uh, I'm going to Hollywood on Friday to become a star. <laughs> that's what I said to him. I'm not kidding. I swear that's what I said. Exact words. And he goes, okay, do it. You don't do it. And he had a really broken ac- um, accent. <laughs> so just go ahead, make it happen. So I went to uh, Hollywood and uh, I had one lead. I hit a couple of, I did a couple of, uh, what do you call it? Knocks on a door and that, that didn't do anything. That was just nonsense. But uh I did have a lead. A friend of mine said, you know, go see this guy. And he's a producer. He's done some real records. And there's also going to be a really a really significant manager staying with him, you know, for the weekend for some business. And I'm like, all right. So I went over there and I, I played him the song. And he played, it was Angel Eyes I played. And the first time he heard it, it was like, wow, that's a great song. Uh, but uh, maybe maybe you need to change a couple of parts here. Let's maybe cut this or something. Here, let me listen again. So he listens to it again. He goes... After finished listening to it, he's just sitting there listening. He just goes, "Wow, that's pretty amazing, dude. That that doesn't need anything. That song's done. It sounds like a hit, doesn't it?" I go, "Yeah, thanks. I like it. I think it's got something." So, Stan walks up the manager, guys, gold chains. I mean, he's you know you can tell he's in it. You know, he's in the game. So he goes, "Hey, listen, you should really listen to." At that time, it was Michael. You know, you need you need to listen to this Michael too. You really listen to the kid's record. He goes, "You know what? I'm sure this. I'm sure you're great." I, I just cannot take another act on. I am just full. I, I just don't really want to hear it. Because if I like it, then I'm going to be, then I'm going to want it more. And I'm going to just got more shit to deal with. And I don't want it. So then the other guy goes, I really think you should hear this. I don't think this is something to pass up. You need to hear this. And he goes, I'll tell you what. Here's my address in New York City. So I'll, be, I'll be back in New York on Monday. Send it. This was like Saturday morning I met with him. And... Um, so I went, as soon as I left the place there, I went immediately to uh, FedEx and I sent it 
for immediate delivery for Monday morning. Okay. And so he got to his office uh, probably like two o'clock in the afternoon and it was on his desk already. So I beat him to it, you know, made sure that be it. And he, on my answering machine, he leaves me a message and it says, you fucking prick. It is that good. <laughs> we got to talk. That's exactly what it, and I could still hear angel eyes. It's only in the second course. He's only in the second course, you know? And he goes, you got to come in, call me as soon as you get into, into uh, back to Connecticut. Came back on Monday or Tuesday. No, I came back on Tuesday afternoon. Wednesday, we went to New York to meet with him. He said, hey, this I want to work with you. These are the terms. These are kind of we'll do the formal agreement later. Well, I just need to get something so I can get going right away. Do we have an agreement that I will work together? Yes. Okay, good. I'll talk to you. I'll call you. He calls me on Friday. Five o'clock. I'll never forget it. He goes, hey, just want to let you know you're going to be signed to Universal Records. Have a good weekend. Doosh. Done. <laughs> literally, that's all. Oh, my God. Right. So literally, so the, the Friday before you're having dinner, or I think it was Friday, you said you're having dinner with your... Saturday. With your, yeah, okay. Yeah. So not, not, not even a week later. Right. Not even a week later. I come back. It's like, yeah, it's, it's happening. This is a true story. Yeah, literally that... I don't know, next week, the head of A&R's, all those guys showed up. We jammed out. We played. Everybody loved the band. It was literally, boom, all right, let's find a producer, find this, find that. Engineers, it was two months, I think, maybe a month or two months later, we were in California recording the record. So did you guys do a bunch of pre-production and whatnot for, for that record? Like, did you, did you work with, um, with Mark and pa- Paul Northfield, like, through that whole period kind of thing or did you meet them after the fact in the studio oh, no we we booked two weeks of pre-production in those days that's what you do yeah well i didn't want to be there because i knew all was done <laughs> it was done there was nothing to do anymore we it was finished the arrangements were done the solos were done the vocals were done it was finished i mean if you listen to the demos it's the same as the album there's nothing to do what else are you going to do to it it's it was it was already the energy was already focused on you know the song and getting it right and it was just all there you know and uh, well it's it I mean you guys had years and years to craft these songs to that point you know it wasn't like you did a new record you know a month before and you're still kind right. of tweaking some things mm-hmm. exactly it was it was already it was already put together so it wasn't like we wrote it last month and now let's bang it out nope it was a, here's the demos and that's now let's record it for real you know with and that's where Mark. And uh, Paul came in, you know. Actually, I had a conversation with Mark uh, uh, like a few weeks ago. And uh, Mark is a fantastic producer. I love Mark. And actually, he's a great guy, all the above, you know. We even said, he said it to me last week. He goes, well, he goes, the record, we recorded it. You came, but it was already done. But there's no way I could have recorded it to that level at that, you know, that time and that age. You know what I'm saying? It needed to go through that process and, and mark did so many amazing albums in excess to to uh acdc to the vinyl i mean it just goes on and on you know oh yeah he's worked with so many people right it's um do you feel like even you know after all this preliminary stuff you guys had happened like did mark really kind of help to bring you guys up into the next level as a band you feel oh yeah i mean all of it everything elevated of course i mean Mark had a lot to do with um, just bringing it to another level of professionalism. You know what I mean? It really signified the big time, the real deal. You know, when you're, it's just like when you're that young or in that position, when you're in a demo stage, and then when you get into a real professional stage, it's such a difference. It's night and day. Oh, you yeah. yeah. And you can, you can just immediately tell who's in it for real and who's not in a second. So um, that was a lot of uh, learning process there. I mean, I knew what I wanted, and they were also very cordial and asking me, what do you hear? What do you hear? What do you think this record should be? What do you see it as? What, I mean, it was, those were the questions you know, that you know, Mark and I talked about a lot. And uh, he did a fantastic job knowing exactly how to create that vision. So it was a good team effort, I will say. And I still, till this day, I'm friends with the guy. How crazy is that? You know what I mean? Um, and then, so what do you feel you learned as a band, or rather, I guess, uh, what changed between the first and the second records? You know, obviously, Angel Eyes goes on to be, you know, a pretty sizable hit and that kind of thing. What sort of changed within the band between the first and second, do you feel? Well, I think um, the first record was 
a little more um, poppy. You know, the second record was a little more, uh, a little harder. You know, it definitely had a lot more um, energy, intensity. It's just, uh, it was turning, because uh, I always, see, I always saw the band as a four-piece, you know, just like Zeppelin. And, uh, and then when we added, you know, the second guitar, then it just became a little bit more of, of what everybody else, you know, in that genre was doing. You know what I mean? A little more Judas Priest, if you will. Yeah, so it became a little more generic, kind of, everybody would have two guitars, everybody, did, you know, this kind of thing. And I always thought of it as like, should be one guitar is wailing, the bass player wailing, the singer wailing, and the drummer wailing. And now there's more room to hear everybody too, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's just, it was just preference at that time. But, um, so going to second record, I just felt, you know, we needed to, you know, start growing a little bit. Let's, let's, you know, let's open up a little bit, do different, uh, you know, avenues, try different things. You know, I, I knew the music was changing. I was feeling it. And I was like, well, let's try to, uh, you know, bang it up a little bit, take it to new levels. And I think Tangled and Rains was an amazing record. Yeah, a, very. Like, a, if, if I had to just kind of listen to the two records, I feel it's a bit more mature, if you will. You know, you guys definitely grew right. between those two records. Right, of course. That's um, definitely had a more touring. You know, we went a lot of tours, a lot of shows we did, a lot of just a lot of going on, you know. So I guess that's the good word for it, matured. <laughs> And then, um, I guess, sort of using that as a springboard, I kind of want to bridge two topics: Tangled and Reigns and uh, the movie Rockstar. Because I know you, you know, you did uh, worked with Tom Worman on both. Is that how you got involved right. with with Rockstar? Was through him? Yeah, um, Tom. Uh, interesting enough, in '99, a bit. Yeah, it was '99. I was actually in Connecticut, my brother's house, and I was leaving in the morning for Los Angeles. And I was going back to Los Angeles, like, all right, I got to get back. I got to get my shit together. I got to put a new band together or get the other guys together. It's because it's, you know, I'm just it's 99. I'm not doing anything. It's like, it's, I feel like I'm dying on a vine, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, singer not singing is just like, it's awful. You know what I it's mean? It's tough. Yeah. Yeah, it's just awful. So anyway, so I said, all right, I'm going to go back and I'm going to put something together. I got a lot of great songs. Let me, that's what I'm doing. And just so happens, Tom calls and he goes, uh, hey, yeah, listen, uh, I'm doing this. Uh, I'm doing this project, and uh, it's a pretty big project. I think what it is about a singer, a great singer, that uh, you know, he finds himself. You gotta, you know, the story. And uh, he goes, you know, I think that you'd be great in this. You know, I think that you would be the. I think you're the guy for this. Would you be interested to call, come in audition? I was like, yeah. He goes, well, when can you come in? I said, I'll come in tomorrow. I'll, I'll, I'm flying in at 11. <laughs> you know, I'll be in at 11 a.m. He goes, great. I'll see you at the studio at 1.30. Done. <laughs> Went to the studio, came there, 1.30. I sang uh, for about an hour and a half, and I went home, and I actually um, re-sang. I said, give, it, give this to me. I want to sing something at home. I'll bring it back to you in the morning. I fixed, you know, I did like little different arrangements of different stuff, uh, way of singing it. Okay, I brought it back in, like kind of handed my homework in. It was hilarious. And they were all just like, okay, we're done. We'd love to have you. So it was just like, I already knew when I left, when I left after singing that afternoon, I already knew that was the guy. Oh, man. You know? Yeah, it, it was just known. It was just like, okay, you know, this, this just feels right. You know, when it feels right, it's just right, you know? Exactly. Yeah. So that was it. Do you remember, what, what did you sing? Like, did you sing actual Steel Dragon stuff when you went in through yeah. that? Or? Yeah. I sang... Uh, uh, wasted generation. Oh, okay, yeah, it's, it's. I don't. I don't think you yeah. sing that on the soundtrack, right? I think that's Jeff. I, f- I forget. Uh, that might be you. I, I can't. <laughs> I know your blood pollution and we all die young, and then from there I kind of forget who does what. I do. Uh, the problem is I sang all the vocals on the on the movie. Okay, everything that comes out of Mark's mouth is me, except the last uh, last song is from the guy from the Verve Pipe. Yeah. Okay, and I went and I did do that as well. I sang that one before, but uh, they their budget they were so over budget, and they, they wouldn't fly me back because I, I forgot where I was. I, I was somewhere in New York, and they wouldn't fly me back and take care of me to come back to L.A. to sing it. Okay, it was like really, it was like kind of weird to be honest with you. Yeah, it's well, it, I mean, I remember my first time watching that movie and just kind of being jarred by that. I was like, why is the voice completely different? What's going on? Yeah, and I sang the shit out of it too. I sang it so good. It was so, my voice was so deep. It sounded like, you know, it sounded really good. <laughs> and, and they, and I'm like going, God, you're so cheap. 
you got to be kidding me. You know, they started really, you know, because they, they were like, I, I don't even the $40 million they spent on the movie. Mm -hmm. Stupid. Ridiculous, you know. So anyway, so uh, shit. Where was I? Sorry, bro. It's been it's been the, your 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 interview number twelve. Yeah. Oh, so. I know. I know. I, I can only imagine. You know, I think of like stories that's I've told twice in a day, and I go, "What? You think of on number twelve? Yeah. <laughs> I know. No, I have that, friends with comedians okay. who do three shows in a day, and they're like, you know, by the third show, you're like, "Did I tell that joke? Am I? What's? Yeah. Um. Anyway, right. so so rock star and sort of what songs you sang and that kind of thing. Yeah. Well. So anyway. So every I sang everything. I sang. Blood Pollution, I sang uh, We All Die Young, I sang uh, Living the Life, I sang Wasted Generation, I sang, um, there's a, I gotta look it up in my phone, there's there's another there's another one or two Reckless, songs. I know, I know that everything. one. Everything, yeah. I mean everything, Reckless, oh Reckless, Reckless, did you hear it? You gotta hear the full song. I found like, that, that just wound up on YouTube, I found that like a week ago, and I've been wanting to hear that for like. 15 years ah yeah slam oh. that shit that's yes. shit tight reckless i sang i ripped that all of them all those songs when you hear all the songs sung and and everything not the not, forget the soundtrack just my voice just listen to every song i sang i think it was six or seven songs that i sang and then all the hallelujahs and all the in between that was me oh, and, and the church and, uh, and whatnot that scene yeah yeah of course as someone who's, you know, a, a big fan of that movie, um, I mean, the movie was what it was, but the music is incredible as a hard rock right. fan. Can you, like, can I ask you to advocate for that to get that released at some point? Because there's so many tunes on that that never came out that, you know, I know fans are just I would, to I would love nothing more, but I can't do anything. I mean, you got to understand, I mean, I mean, theoretically, I think till this day, I, I wasn't allowed to speak about that, you know, that I was the voice of that. You know, it was a it was a serious legal issue, so you know they didn't want anyone to know it was my voice, and that really can you imagine how bad that must must have been for me? Sure, sure, you know, sure. It was yeah. I'm, I'm we're at the forum and I'm watching. He's singing and we all die young, and the you know place is losing their mind. And I'm sitting there going, holy shit! Oh, that's of my course. Voice. You know, it's bizarre. I mean, it's bizarre. You know, it's too bad. You know, too bad. It, it took me years to get any recognition for it. You know, it's really too bad, but uh, it is what it is, right? Yeah, well, I mean, it's weird, too, because I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to listen to, you know, a couple of songs, pull up the soundtrack or whatever, and go, okay, listen to Blood Pollution. Well, clearly that sounds like the same guy is doing the Hallelujah in the movie. Right. You know, I mean, I always figured as much, because I can't imagine... You know, I'm I'm sure uh, Mark is a decent singer, but I can't imagine him having you know that hallelujah voice. You know, like right. that's not too many people do. Well, you also you know that retarded scream, you know that uh, the scream that's in uh, in the in the interview when they do the interview. Oh, the the um uh you know the yeah you know that that note right yeah that that was actually done at rehearsal because the rehearsal they um we recorded everything at rehearsal. You know, just in case we get some, you know, great stuff or whatever have you. Mm -hmm. And that was this was one point, and I just I screamed like forever. But they also did it. I think they extended it a little bit too, because I think it was just like I don't know, two minutes long. The damn thing it was just insane, <laughs> like long. But uh, but I did I did sing that pretty intense. So I mean, all of that stuff, all of that stuff, um, the ad libs, uh, well. To stand up and shout when you Mark sings it in the uh, you know in the uh, yeah it's an outside it? show that's what it was some club or whatever some outside or some kind of concert they're doing so yeah well listen to it now listen to the watch the movie now and then then you'll see yeah I, I, really, I really need to check that out um, but if you also if you look if you look at the originally it's kind of funny the movie originally was called Metal God remember yeah right so. It's kind of ironic. All of a sudden, the movie becomes Steel Dragon. The actual, my jacket, okay? That's my jacket. Steel Dragon jacket with the dragon on the sleeve. Mm -hmm. That's my jacket that was painted in Tokyo. I, I would wear it. I wore it to rehearsals. Like in, in like the okay. Steel Heart days? No, during the movie, Rock. Yeah, I had that jacket, the dragon. That's my jacket, okay? Mm -hmm. But I wore it to rehearsals. And then they changed the damn movie to Steel Dragon. Get it? Steel Dragon, Steel Heart. Well, let's have them fall down the stairs and get hurt. <laughs> I mean, it's like, uh, okay. 
So, uh, oh, that's too funny. Yeah. Okay. So I know, I know we're quickly coming up on time. So we, you know, got to hit the new record and some other things. Um, before we do that though, I, I'm curious. Um, I've heard a couple of your stuff and, uh, the stuff you've done in Korea. You know, I've, I love the tune, uh, My Love Is Gone. Um, and I've heard a couple of the other songs uh-huh. you actually sang in Korean. I didn't realize you were fluent in that language. Right. Well, I'm not really fluent in the language. I can sing it and enunciate, but I can't really speak it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I haven't. Can I get into it? Yes. Can I, you know, really fall into it? Yes, I can. However, the amount of time that I have in a day is just beyond limited. So I have to really focus on, you know, what's important at hand. And right now, you know, learning the language is not really what I'm supposed to be doing. But as far as singing the songs in Korean and singing songs, I may sing a song in Japanese and in Italian. So I am, uh, I am, we're actually just waiting on that because this single that's coming out, Lips of Rain, I don't know if you heard that song. Uh, we just finished the video for that over the weekend. And um, we didn't finish it, we filmed it. And uh, that should be um, released really shortly. And I'm thinking about singing that in Italian and also in Japanese. But we'll see. Interesting. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. That that'll be cool. I yeah. listen to a lot of Japanese music, so that would be very interesting to hear. Yeah. I would love to. Be. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So, and that song you mentioned, "Lips of Rain," that's on the new record, I take it. Yes. That's okay. on the new record. Excellent. Yep. So let's talk about that. So you got the new record uh, through Worlds of Stardust. Tell me about the whole. Like you've got a whole new band together, essentially, as I take it. Um, you know, t- tell me about kind of assembling the band in this new record. Well, you know, the yeah, the guys that I've been using um, on the record, I have. Um, it seems to be that Steelheart has, since the original lineup, Steelheart has uh, had many changes. Right now, where this album is, it's really interesting times for the band, for the brand, everything. You know. Because the album is complete, great players on it, great musicians. I'm very curious myself to see where it folds and where it molds into the next core. Because it just seems to be a little, it's all together, but it's just about to fall into another level. And that's where it needs to go. So the guys that are in there right now, Urosh had a baby, Rev had a baby, and honestly, in a different mind frame, so to speak. So I don't know um, where their head lies with that. And that's why I'm saying I'm being brutally honest to see how this unfolds into a new level. But I really feel something great about it. So my heart and ears are open. You know, we shall see. I've got to say the, um, the production on the new record sounds incredible. Like, this is a great sounding album. Uh, tell me about that. Where did you record it? I saw something that you did part of it in Sweden or something? Yeah, we did... Um, Let's see, we did the bed tracks here in Los Angeles over at uh, Robbie Krieger's studio. Oh, 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 um, oh, what's um, the name of that studio? It, I, can't, I can't what is it? Uh, oh, man, now you got me. Oh, God, it's a tip of my tongue. It'll come back to me. But anyway, Robbie, of course, you know, I was I was a front man for, for Robbie and the Doors for, for a while. Did you know that? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so Robbie and I really, you know, we're still really good friends. We wrote a bunch of music together. And he built a studio with Michael Dumas here in L.A. And it's a really nice studio, really nice equipment. And uh, so I said, well, hey, man, let's do the bed tracks there. We recorded the bed tracks and then we moved everything over to my studio. I have here at the lot uh, where we did all the overdubs and the vocals and all the strings were done in Sweden. I did some of the vocals in New York, London and Canada and uh, really? Los Angeles. Where would you record here? Uh, actually in, um, what's it called? Uh, where's Mike Frazier? Where's, he's in Montreal though, isn't he? A lot, I thought he was in Vancouver, but I could be wrong. Vancouver. No, no, Vancouver, Vancouver. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. In Vancouver. Oh, you worked with um, him on the, on part of the vocals, eh? No, he mixed, he mixed three of the songs. Oh, okay. Okay. I got yeah, you. And while, while he was mixing the songs, I was in the other room still singing. Uh, I was singing come inside. I was singing the, the, uh, that song in the other room. Yeah, so I did the vocals there. Part of it was mixed in uh, London, Ontario. Really? Oh, by, um, was it, yeah. the, I can't think of his name. He did the last record too, Dan. Right? Dan Broadback. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yes. Right. Dan, great. I mean, everybody who's working on the record, I mean, my hat off to everybody. It's such talented, talented people in what, everything they do. So, um, really lucky to have all those 
characters on there, you know, from everyone from musicians to uh, mixing engineers to engineers to all of that. So um, really, and I was very careful on picking the energy of the people who's going to be on it, you know. So right. I saw it too. Like you've got um, Randy Cook on drums. Is that like the Randy Cook is playing drums on the record? Yeah, the Randy, my boy. He is awesome. Yeah, that's Randy. Did he? Yeah, how, the how Randy much did he play on? Was it just like a track, or did he play on a good bulk of? The he played pl- played on three tracks. Oh. He did uh, "Lips of Rain." He did "With Love We Live Again" and uh, "My Freedom." And it was because uh, those are the songs. What happened is like when I went into the studio, and we cut the ten tracks. Some of the songs that I took from the past, because they, you know, we were thinking about, well, let's have this, let's have some of the past in there, you know. And um, when I listened to the record, when I brought it back to my studio, I listened to the bed tracks. I'm going, this is ridiculous. This, this song doesn't sound nowhere near to what this song is. They got to go. So I canned four songs and I wrote four new songs while I was in a, in a studio, which is pretty insane, you know, to do at that time. But it, it really came together great. I mean, called my boy Brandy's Randy. Yeah, I got it. Let's go. Let's knock these drums out. So, because um, the rest of the guys already left, you know, they went back to uh, Philadelphia and Oklahoma, and so I, um, so I use Randy, and Randy is fantastic. I love him. He's a really, really talented drummer. So that's how he came about. Interesting. And now, are there plans to get you guys out on the road? Like, do you think touring is going to happen for this record? Well, it has to happen. You know, a couple of things. We are gearing up for that for next year, mostly. We try to hit every you know festival and all of that. And you know what? I got to be honest with you. I really feel it all. It's all determines on the fans and journalists like yourself, and and maybe some radio, because it's um, you know nowadays it's so the music business is so different. Really need the help from everybody to really say, okay, we want want to hear this, and so the promoters want to you know bring the band out. Otherwise, it's like, um, it is what it is. I mean, if this record, and I truly believe this, you know, from the bottom of my heart, it was really needs to be promoted properly, but it takes a ton of money to promote something properly, you know? Right. And this is where the majors really have it, you know? I mean, this record, I invested money into it. I invested money into the videos as well, because I believe in it. But at the end of the day, we, it has to be seen. It has to be seen through a majority of people so they all see it. If they don't see it, they don't know about it. It's like, uh, you know, people go every day. They got so many things going on and their things are happening in their lives. They don't have time to go to Facebook to see what Steel Heart's doing. But if they're driving down a road or they're in a bar or something and they see my video on the bar, it's like, oh, that guy. Oh, what the hell is he doing? Oh, I like this song in the bar or on the radio. And it's like, oh, man, oh, that sounds good. Now you're in the, you know, you're back in their minds. And so it's a little tricky. So I, I need a little love from everyone. If everyone believe, if everyone believes in the record, like they say to do. And I, today I had a beautiful day of, really beautiful day of nothing but everyone really telling me how they enjoy the record. I, um, I really could use everyone's help to really, you know, to leap. Otherwise it's, I made a record for myself, so to speak. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, every, every artist always says, well, I did it for myself, and if you enjoy it, that's great, too. But on the other hand, you also, you know, hope other people get the same... Right. Know, but I, I didn't... Same same feeling. I didn't it. make this record only for myself. I didn't. I mean, that's not the way I make records. I make my records for myself, but also for everyone else. Because I feed off of everyone else's energy, and their feelings, their emotions, their pain, and their anger, and everything. I feel them and I, and I and myself and combine together. That's why I make the record. If I made it just for myself, well, then I might as well not even release it. Why should I even give it to anyone? It's just for me. You know what I mean? For me to listen to. It's for everyone. It's for all of us. It's, it's not meant for me to keep it for myself. It's meant for me to give it and deliver it and share it. That's the whole point, you know? So, um, well, let's see what life has in store, you know? <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Oh, Millie, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out to do this interview. I know, I know you've got another one, so I'll let you, um, you know, jump on to the next. Um, but yeah, so uh, best of luck with the new record. Thanks so much, and uh, you know, hope it does uh, wonders because I'm really digging what I'm hearing from it so far. I, I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. All, All right, right, you take care. Yep. Bye. Thanks so much. You've Bye-bye. got a hold on me. I can hardly breathe, girl. You got me twisted.